Hi, everyone. Welcome to our weekly Facebook Live. And today we are talking about a really crappy topic because it's so frustrating, hair loss and hypothyroidism. So for those of you who do not know me, my name is Amy Horniman. I am a functional medicine practitioner and I specialize in treating thyroid conditions. So I basically fix you. If you are struggling with hypothyroidism or Hashimoto's and you just don't feel right, you don't really feel like the treatment that you're on right now is quite cutting it, you're still struggling with weight loss and hair loss that we'll be talking about today and energy, low energy, I work with you one-on-one -on -one to fix you. So if you have any questions, as always, I welcome questions in the chat box. Please post them. I will get to all of them at the end. So let's dive into hair loss. So there's a couple things that I'm going to be telling you today that I always have to remind my patients as they are optimizing their thyroid, how the hair loss can actually get worse with T3 treatment. So hang tight and we will get to that. So hair loss, thinning hair, hair kind of going like straw is all part of hypothyroidism. It's one of the symptoms and one of the ones that many, many people will complain about as being one of their top three symptoms of having hypo, struggling with hypo and not quite being optimized on treatment. So when we talk about being optimized, that really is one of our first lines of defense in reversing the hair loss in improving the quality of our hair, getting it to be not so much like straw. So when I say optimize, let's go over some things that maybe you've heard me say, but if you're new to this Facebook Live, to the broadcast, this will be new to you. One of the things I want you to do is make sure you are optimal and not normal. So what does that mean? When I talk about optimal, I'm looking at your labs from a functional medicine point of view. I'm looking at them from optimal. So let's just take them one by one, talk about TSH. TSH lab value range is huge. It's a really big range. It goes all the way up to 4.5 on most standard labs. Optimal per functional medicine is below a two. And in some people, optimal means you need to be suppressed. You need to even be below a one to feel optimal and to reduce your symptoms. Then we can, we're not going to spend too much time on this, but I want to just give you a brief overview. When we look at something like free T4, optimal is 1.5 or above. Normal, you could still come in at a one and be normal, but the free T4 range per most, this is, this is an in general, most standard lab value ranges goes on 10th of a point makes a huge difference. So you might be a one and you might think, oh, 1.5 is not that far off, but it is. It makes a really big difference when we're talking about optimal. Free T3, 3.5 or above, or we can say in the upper quadrant of the free T3 range, not total, but free. And then we can go into reverse T3. I just released a video today on things that increase your reverse T3. I highly recommend you check that out. It is loaded with a lot of good information, things to think about right now, especially with stress. We'll be talking about stress today with the hair. But reverse T3, we want at 12 or below. Now, sometimes we'll accept anywhere between 12 and 15 if everything else is right. So if your free T3 is optimal, if your symptoms are down, then reverse T3 of, a, let's say, 13, 14, 15, we'll say, okay, that's not too bad. In general, we want it below a 12. So optimizing your thyroid profile, and then we can get into antibodies too. We want those as low as possible. Obviously, I like them at zero because we can put Hashimoto's into remission. Uh, but optimizing your thyroid, modulating those hormones is key when looking at hair loss and the thyroid. And until you get those numbers into the optimal range, you can load on all the supplements that you want. And chances are you're not going to see much of a difference until you optimize. Now, that being said, let me expand on what I said a couple minutes ago about the T3. As we are optimizing you and getting you, in order to optimize you, we have to get you on the right medication for your body, what works for you. If we start you on T3, which in general, I am a fan of, T3 medication does what? Increases your metabolism. When I say metabolism, I'm not just talking about fat, although that's a component of it. It increases cell activity. 
So when we look at the hair and the hair growth cycle in undertreated hypothyroidism, that growth cycle is going to slow down. So we see slow regrowth, which right now, since none of us can get to the, to the salon, it's probably good. So our roots don't come in too much, but in general, we see slow regrowth. And when you inc when you add in T3 into a patient's regimen, what can happen is all of a sudden everything speeds up. So sometimes starting a T3 medication, you will notice an increase in hair loss in the beginning because that hair that was kind of just creeping along like, like the tortoise now acts like the hair and it jets out. So we can see an increase in hair loss upon the implementation of NDT, cytomel, leothyronine into your protocol if you were on a T4 medication only. That's something to keep in mind so you don't get frustrated in your journey when you're adding in T3 and you're thinking, hey, this is supposed to help me, and then it doesn't. So um, that's one thing to to keep in mind with when starting um, free T3 or T3 medication. We want your free T3 in the optimal range. Low ferritin is another cause of hair loss in hypothyroid patients. So low ferritin, remember, is the stored form of iron. This is important to have optimal ferritin levels for T4 to T3 conversion. T3 active, T4 inactive, T4 must convert to T3. So low ferritin is probably one of the biggest causes of concern, biggest reasons um, or underlying conditions for hair loss in women. And when you pair that up with hypothyroidism, um, this is where we see the kind of the double whammy to hair when we have low ferritin and hypothyroidism because ferritin is such a key component in that T4 to T3 conversion. So sometimes we will treat ferritin. Um, one of my top favorite products for treating low iron is Ferrochel Iron by Designs for Health. I can post a link when, uh, when this is all done. I'll post a link to that and any other supplements that I talk about. I will be talking about their whole body collagen as well. And I like Ferrochel Iron because it doesn't cause the GI upset that some iron supplementation can cause. Another one is low stomach acid. So this is a big issue with hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's in general. Oftentimes, and in the supplement guide, the protocol that I created that I did post in the files of the Attune Thyroid group, I list betaine HCL, so hydrochloric acid. Many times, this is a key component in someone with hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's because it increases the stomach acid to allow for better digestion. And this also um, helps out with uh, hair because our bodies know that we can live without hair or nail proteins, but we can't survive without the heart muscle proteins or important body proteins. So if stomach acid is low, protein is not efficiently digested, and then hair and male nails that are made up of protein will suffer. So it's kind of a, um, what do I want to say, like a ladder effect, like we, we have the low stomach acid, not digesting well, not digesting and absorbing the protein that we're taking in. What if you don't take in enough protein on top of that? That's where the collagen comes in. Then we have not enough protein getting to the hair and the nails, hair loss or hair like straw, not a good combination. We're just going to go through all of these and then I'll get into your questions. Nutrient deficiencies. That's another big one. So vitamin D, I talk about this so very often, the importance of vitamin D for every cell in your body. I mean, it's kind of like, so when we talk about T3 and how every cell in our body has a receptor site on it for T3, pretty much every body function needs vitamin D. So this is your immune system. This is your gut. Low vitamin D levels are associated with um, an imbalance in the microflora of the gut, increased insulin resistance. So we said last week in the live how high insulin levels will interfere with T4 to T3 conversion. That in turn will affect your hair. So it's kind of a trickle down effect with the vitamin D. Vitamin D is important for mood and for energy. 
vitally important for weight loss, contributes to obesity if it is low, and optimal vitamin D is 80 or above. Just a little side note. We won't, like I said, we're not getting deep diving into any one of these topics, but this is just a generalized um, kind of general information for you to start turning your wheels and thinking about if you are suffering from hair loss or thinning hair due to hypothyroidism. So nutrient deficiencies, we definitely want to test for iodine, zinc, selenium, vitamin D, B12, and magnesium. These are vital to the health of your thyroid, and we need to know the levels. So, and we cannot go by the normal standard lab value range. We have to go by optimal. So things like selenium and iodine, you've heard me talk about before. They're kind of like Goldilocks. We want them just right, not too high, not too low. Too low will produce hypothyroid symptoms and too high will produce hypothyroid symptoms. So that's why I do not recommend supplementing with iodine or selenium unless you know your levels. But nutrient deficiencies are definitely an issue. And you will notice worsening hair loss if you are in a nutrient deficient state with any of those that I just mentioned above. Okay, now let's talk about the other medications that you might be on. So we have talked in the past, we did this uh, two weeks ago, we talked about depression and anxiety and how many of you are given an antidepressant as a Band-Aid. Now, some people do need an antidepressant because of an imbalance in the brain chemistry. I understand that. But this is, we want to talk about what other medications that maybe have been used as a Band-Aid for you instead of getting to the root cause and optimizing your thyroid, which was point one that we want to do. And they've been given to you as that Band-Aid, and now you're taking them on top of, let's say, your Synthroid. So the Synthroid, the Levo, in and of itself can cause a side effect of hair loss in some people, not all but in some people. And then when we pair that up with things like acne medications, antibiotics, antidepressants, those are the big A's, right? Cholesterol drugs, statins are a big one. Statins come along with a ton of side effects, one of them being hair loss or hair thinning. Um, we have different hormone replacement therapy medications if they are not bioidentical. Birth control can do this as well because it's creating that imbalance in your hormones. Anticonvulsants, um, epilepsy drugs, drugs that treat breast cancer, drugs that suppress the immune system, anti-clotting drugs, mood stabilizers, NSAIDs. Uh, steroids, weight loss drugs. So if you are struggling with weight, another Band-Aid that you may have been put on would be something like, um, oh, what's it? Phenermine, Fen-Fen, Adipex, all of those can cause a, a state of hair loss or hair thinning as well. So now you're just kind of piling up the different things. So what if you have a nutrient deficiency and your thyroid's not optimized and that's why they're sticking you on all the medications and they're band-aiding you with all these different medications. <sighs> and now you have like a triple quadruple whammy to your hair. That's not a good scenario. And then you wonder why your hair is coming out in clumps in the sink. Um, okay. A big one, alopecia. So my Hashimoto patients out there, you know, that where we see one autoimmune condition and we see more than one. And alopecia is an autoimmune condition. And I have a particular patient with this that when we talk about, well, let's talk about it now, the whole body collagen by Designs for Health. So here's my story with that. I'll tell you her story, then I'll tell you my story. I have a patient with alopecia. She also has Hashimoto's. We treated both at the same time. So we are optimizing her thyroid and we use Designs for Health whole body collagen with her to help with the hair that was there, never really thinking that it would grow back in the areas of baldness. She now has hair regrowth. People are thinking that her hair is extensions. Now, there's another patient that I did post her. I'll have to post her picture up again. Uh, Brittany, if you're on jump on and tell your story because you gave me permission to post your, your hair picture and your little video you made for me. Uh, she also now does not have alopecia, but has been using the whole body collagen. We're optimizing her thyroid and she has noticed her hair regrowth to the point where people think that it's extensions. I mean, it's, it's long and beautiful and thick and perfect. 
Um, so that's two patients now where people think that they, they have extensions and they don't. Now for me, I used a bunch of different collagens in the past and really gave it a good run. I used Dr. Josh Axe. I used Primal Kitchen. I used Vital Protein. I used a bunch of them. And I would give them a good couple month run, a couple tubs of the collagen. And because I like Designs for Health, I decided, I don't even know what maybe switch over and just grab a, a container of their whole body collagen. And I did that during a time, now let me back up, this is probably, I don't know, a year and a half, two years ago, that I would be going to my hairdresser and she'd be like, what is going on with your hair? Now I've been seeing this girl for 25 years. She's a friend of mine. She's fantastic. And I travel to see her. She's that good. So Shannon, I'm giving you a shout out. You know, we'd be looking at my hair and it'd be like straw. It'd just be this dry, wispy, icky. And she would do a treatment on it every time. And then I come back six weeks later to get my color done. And she'd be like, what's going on? I'm like, I don't know. I get the breakage around my hairline and I started using the whole body collagen and we continue doing the same thing with my hair, the same color, the same treatment. And every month she's like, your hair's looking good. Your hair's looking good. I'm like, I know, I don't know what's going on. And it's just been consistently good now, ever since I've been using the whole body collagen by designs for health daily. So I'll post the link to that too. I cannot speak highly enough about it, quite honestly. Cannot speak highly enough. Uh, so when we're talking about alopecia, one of the things we want to do is get those antibodies under control. So gluten-free diet. Remember, we talked about gluten increasing your antibodies, which is increasing the soldiers that are going to attack your thyroid, but they're also going to attack your hair follicle if you have alopecia. So you want to make sure that you get in there and you reduce your antibodies, reduce those soldiers, keep them at bay, go gluten-free. Think about using something like black seed or black, black, black seed cumin oil. Um, I talked about that in another video and now I'm forgetting the exact uh, word for it. And I am going to be talking about LDN this week, low-dose naltrexone. That would be another option if it's available to you for reducing the... Uh, the antibodies present so that they don't spin into alopecia and start attacking your hair follicles because that's not good. So we talked about birth control being um, kind of a component of the drug interaction that can also cause hair loss. So you have to think about the sex hormone imbalances. So many, many times with hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's, we see PCOS. PCOS not only brings with it insulin resistance that we talked about last week, but it, you can also have higher than normal testosterone levels, which can also push, push up dihydrotestosterone, DHT. DHT is what is present. We see it in men with the receding hairline. And if women have high DHT levels, they will notice hair loss and they will notice a receding hairline as well. So imbalance in sex hormones, higher than normal testosterone, uh, converting over to DHT, not a good thing. Also with uh, PCOS, we see low progesterone and that's a total imbalance because progesterone is the balancing hormone. Progesterone comes in and balances out estrogen and testosterone. So the last thing we want is to have low progesterone levels as well. And we see this a lot in perimenopause when everything starts to shift. So when your hair loss accelerates if you are in the perimenopausal age range. That's something to look at and get tested. Get all of your hormones tested. Make sure if you are a female and you go in to ask for a full hormone panel, you specify that you would like estradiol, progesterone, free and total testosterone, DHEA, and DHT. Because oftentimes you'll just get estrogen tested and yeah, you're a woman, but you're more than just estrogen. We need all the hormones to be in balance. So sex hormone imbalance is also a big one. Um, and one thing that you can pay attention to, and this is kind of just unfair all the way around, is if you're a woman and you have hair growth, dark hairs on your chin, but you're losing hair on your head. That's not fair at all. But that is possible with perimenopause and menopause as those hormones begin to shift. If you do have an excess in testosterone, low progesterone, excess DHT, or you do have PCOS, that's what we see with it. So it's kind of a double whammy. Get your hormones tested. Get them tested. 
Um, because what we can do is use things like um, DIM and Indo3 Carbonyl that will pull out the bad estrogens. We can use, um, um, oh my gosh, now I'm, I'm totally blanking. It's the medication that we use for PCOS. Well, we can use berberine to lower your insulin because that's a, a big driver of high testosterone and high DHT. And then we can use um, Spiro, 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 Spiro to uh, reduce the, the DHT levels as well. So that will at least help balance things out, help with the nasty dark hair growth and also help with the hair loss on the head just a little bit, but we have to do everything together, not just one thing. Okay. Also remember what you're eating. We talked about glucose. We have to talk about sugar. So going back to last week's Facebook live, high insulin. So if you're eating a lot of sugar, a lot of carbohydrates, not only are you creating an inflammatory re response in your body, so a lot of inflammation, and then we're going to get a decrease. My dog just laid on my, my camera, if you saw it jiggle, like literally just laid down, plopped down on my camera. Um, anyways, so yeah, Michael, it's Riley. He just laid on the camera. Um, so if you're eating a lot of sugar and processed carbohydrates, that's going to raise your insulin levels that will impair T4 to T3 conversion. It will raise your TSH. Now your thyroid's all wonky. What's it's going, what is it going to do? Slow down your hair growth, cause hair loss and completely block the nutrients from getting to the hair shaft. And again, we talked about that protein. So it's going to, um, block the protein synthesis. And maybe that has to do with your hydrochloric acid too. So beta and HCL very much needed for, um, to balance out stomach acid. We can use berberine to lower insulin resistance. We can use the whole body collagen, which is just a rock star in improving hair quality, hair regrowth, especially in alopecia. So I will put all of those, um, in the, comment section as well. I want to talk a little bit about omega-3. So those of you who have asked me about omega-3 supplements, I'm really kind of just right in the middle. I think if you're using omega-3 supplements because you have, let's say, a lot of inflammation, you have a high um, ESR or a high C-reactive protein, that's fine. I think that they are very beneficial in some cases, but I urge you to use the right brand because a bad omega-3 can do more harm than good. So if you're using it for cardiovascular effects, I actually prefer a natto synergy. A natto synergy by designs for health has the um, black curmin seed oil in it, which lowers antibodies and it has a more well-rounded, um, uh, profile for protecting cardiovascular health. Now, omega-3s are good for, for your hair if you're on a low-fat diet. But if you're doing something like a ketogenic diet, you're eat, using a lot of olive oil and coconut oil and avocados, then really an omega-3 probably isn't completely necessary in this case. You could always add it in, uh, make sure that it has GLA, the gamma linoleic acid, and uh, maybe even a little bit of primrose oil, you might find some combinations with that as well with the omega profile. But use it, use from a good company only because you do not want anything that's been farm raised and you certainly don't want anything overseas right now coming from China. Um, a lot of people will use biosil or biotin. That actually has been proven to not be very effective with hair growth. So if you're using a biotin supplement, you probably haven't seen a whole lot of Siri's answering me now. I got the dog laying on the light. I got Siri. I must have said something like Siri to call her or something. Okay. Anyways, um, if you have been using biotin and you have noticed a difference, pop in here and, and, and tell me your story. I haven't seen many patients be successful using biotin, have not seen it. And so we did talk about collagen. I'll give you that um, link. And then the last thing, let's just talk about stress. Because right now, everybody's under a little bit more stress than usual. Maybe money's tight. Maybe you lost your job. Maybe you're just stuck at home with kids and your family. And you're starting to go a little bit stir crazy. Hopefully, you're getting out in the sun a little bit. 
but stress is a big factor. So think about stress doing pretty much everything. It will raise your reverse T3. It will impair T3 from getting into the cell. It will impair T4 to T3 conversion. It will create inflammation. It will raise your cortisol levels, which will impair T4 to T3 conversion. It will raise your cortisol levels, which will raise your blood glucose, which will raise your insulin. Could you try again? Siri's answering me again. Unbelievable. Interesting this is a great live. This just, just, it's just kind of funny. And I don't even know where it's coming from. Oh, it's coming from my watch. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> um, and so stress, 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 stress will impair your sleep. So we talked in the video that I posted earlier today about sleep being a, an important factor when we're looking at what raises reverse T3. Well, lack of sleep, poor sleep, that will increase reverse T3. So we see stress coming in and just doing all kinds of damage, all kinds of damage. So anything that we can do to relieve stress, reduce stress, deep breathing, hot yoga, do hot yoga in the bathroom. That's what I've been doing. Turn the shower on, get yourself a little infrared heater and you know, get Vimeo or YouTube and throw on some hot yoga, do some deep breathing, anything you can do to reduce stress. Now, I've also been using Pharma GABA with myself and with patients. That's kind of like, I talked about this in another video, oh, two weeks ago when we we're talking about depression and anxiety. Pharma GABA is for when you're really like tight and anxious and you want to take it down a notch. Phosphatidylserine PS is a nice overall balancer to reduce cortisol levels and reduce stress. You all know I'm not a fan of ashwagandha. If your cortisol is high, it could raise it higher. Um, I'm not a fan of ashwagandha unless you know your cortisol levels and you know that cortisol pattern that occurs with a four-point salivary cortisol test. So when we're talking about stress, I would rather you lean towards PS and Pharma GABA to reduce your stress along with yoga and some deep breathing. All of these factors play a role when we're talking about hair loss. So you can see it's not just about optimizing your thyroid. That's where we start. That's the most important piece of the whole puzzle. But you can see how we have to kind of attack hair loss and hair thinning hair quality from a variety of different angles. And we could deep dive into your food too. You want to make sure that you're getting enough protein. I see an increased amount of hair loss in vegans and vegetarians because their protein sources are not bioavailable. That's where larger amounts of the whole body collagen can come in. Um, and that's where beta and HDL to improve digestion can come in. So you do want to look at your protein intake as well. Make sure it's from a good source grass fed, even if it's grass fed grain finished, that's fine. And you want to make sure that your protein levels for a woman, I like them um, really like 70, 80 or above. You don't have to go crazy. You don't have to get into hundreds, 200, 70, 80 or above is perfect protein level to um, increase your protein intake. And then you throw on some whole body collagen on top of that you're good to go. But think about all the different factors. Hopefully you took some notes so you can take a look at all the different aspects of hair loss. This is a hot topic. I know many of you are suffering from it. I do want to get to your questions as well. So after the live, when I post it on the, um, uh, on Facebook, it'll automatically post on there. I will put in all of the links to everything that I talked about. I promise you. All right. So Miss Bonnie, hello. Cameo, hello. Michael, hello. Lisa, Donna, Summer. Okay. Let's get to your questions. Cameo, you said, oh my God, lately I've been losing hair like crazy and never had issues with hair loss before. So now it's making sense. Right. So Cameo, the, the T3 coming in is definitely going to kind of spit out more hair. But when you start on T3 and when we start to optimize your thyroid, like we are with you, you're going to notice. And I try to remember to tell my patients this in the beginning, but sometimes we're talking about so much in that 90 minute consult. And then, I mean, we talk about so much afterwards too, that oftentimes I apologize. I forget about the, uh, the increased hair loss with the addition of T3 and optimizing your thyroid, but that is a possibility. Okay. Uh, moving on. Bonnie Joe reverse T3 is a 24. Yeah, I know. That's it's just crazy. Um, so Bonnie Joe, we would definitely uh yeah, we need to work at getting that done. So did you see Bonnie? I just posted earlier today um what raises reverse T3. So make sure you watch that video too. 
and you feel free to reach out to me. Miss Lisa, hi. You can't stay, but you'll watch later in class. You go, girl. You get your class done. That's good. Um, Donna, hello. Summer, hello. Summer, you're saying does collagen, does the collagen you use help with cellulite and skin? Have you noticed it helping? Oh, good question. So Summer, I have not noticed it with cellulite. Um, ever since optimizing my thyroid, I, I don't have that much. Um, I, I keep my body weight pretty much in check. So that's not something if anybody has used it, notice an improvement in their cellulite, let me know. Improvement in skin. Yes. And I can't pinpoint is it the collagen? Is it me changing what I'm using on my skin? I'm not quite sure, but I'm not going to stop using the collagen. I'll tell you that. It definitely improves my hair. So I'm sure it is doing something to my skin. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm 46 and I don't think that Facebook has a filter. So what you see is what you get. I use a ring light and that's that's the, the soft lighting that you're seeing. But but yeah, overall, honestly, I would say summer, it does help my my skin to a point. I like to think so. Bonnie Joe, what is the best way to determine if gluten is an issue? It is an issue, period. So Bonnie, if you're asking um, whether or not you are celiac, that is that that requires testing. So we can test using tissue transglutaminase test. That is uh, a blood test. And then even further than that, we can do a biopsy that requires a colonoscopy, uh, a biopsy to confirm whether or not you are truly celiac. But here's the thing. If you have Hashimoto's, if you have any autoimmune condition, you shouldn't be eating gluten. If you're just an average person with no problems whatsoever, you shouldn't be eating gluten because then you're going to have problems. We can't digest gluten. It, it's an inflammatory agent, period. We should all be gluten-free. It's not just a fad. It is based in science. We can see it. So we can see study after study. And the studies that say that gluten-free doesn't do anything are the ones that replaced everything with gluten with a gluten-free version. So, okay, I got my bread. I'm going to buy gluten-free bread. I got my cereal. I'm going to buy gluten-free cereal. I got my pretzels. I'm going to buy gluten-free pretzels. That doesn't do it. You're still taking in sugar and inflammatory ingredients. You have to replace it with real food. So to answer your question, Bonnie, gluten is an issue. It definitely is. Now, in terms of hair, yeah, it's going to be inflammatory in the whole body. It's going to produce systemic full body inflammation. So it's going to be an issue with your hair follicle, with getting nutrients to the hair follicle, and with hair loss as well. Hair loss, hair growth. Um, Alicia, hello. If my cycle is still regular at 55, um, should I test sex hormones at a specific time in my cycle? Yes. I like doing day 20 to 22 of the cycle. So congratulations on still having a regular cycle at 55. I think that's awesome. And some of that's genetic. So, but, um, Hey, we'll take it right. We'll take mine is still regular too. And I'm pumped. Um, so yeah, I would test. And if you happen to do Alicia, if you happen to do a four point salivary cortisol panel, like something from ZRT, I like doing the combo cortisol and hormones and then test on like day 20 to 22. That's a great question. Thank you. Jan, don't some docs blame hair loss on alopecia rather than optimal thyroid? Yes, they do. That's a great comment too. Thank you, Jan. So a lot of times you might get the diagnosis of having alopecia and your doc still isn't looking further to see is your thyroid optimized. And I would argue that the thyroid degradation, if it's Hashimoto's, the destruction of your thyroid occurred first before the alopecia. Now it could be the other way around as well. Antibodies are antibodies. Um, autoimmune is autoimmune. Where we see one, we see three. So, um, but you're, you're right, Jan, and that let's not just give you, oh, I'm sorry, you have alopecia. I have another patient. This was years ago, years, years, years ago. Um, she had a thyroid problem. She had Hashimoto's and it was not optimized whatsoever. And she had full alopecia. So she was wearing a wig. And once we started optimizing her thyroid, she saw hair regrowth. Now it's not to the point that she can avoid the wig, but she still had hair regrowth, which told us that we are going in the right direction because her antibodies are no longer attacking her hair follicles causing basically complete baldness, we actually saw stimulation of the hair. And that was before whole body collagen came into the picture. This is, I mean, we're talking probably five years ago, um, before I even started using the whole body collagen. So yes, yeah, she had the diagnosis of alopecia, but her thyroid was not optimized. Bonnie, why do doctors seem to push refined carbohydrates, especially for type two diabetics? Uh, Bonnie. So 
if I pick up a diabetic cookbook, I pretty much lose my mind. Um, if I look up or Google diabetic recipes online, I lose my mind. If I hear what a diabetic educator told my patient after they were diagnosed, I want to punch a wall. Um, I don't have the answer to the why, Bonnie, but it's pretty darn ridiculous. I had one type 2 diabetic that I was actually told to drink, oh, just drink a half a cup of orange juice in the morning instead of your full cup. Just inject sugar into your veins and then wish for the best with your glucose. Oh, but your medication will take care of it. Are you kidding me? No. Um, so, Bonnie, I wish I had a better answer for you, but it drives me absolutely up a wall. Donna, low inadequate iron levels. Yep, we said that earlier. Donna, I'm not sure if you jumped on late, but low iron levels, low ferritin, big cause. So that that's probably one of the biggest cause, just to kind of reiterate if anybody did jump on a little bit late. Number one was optimize your thyroid. Number two was check your ferritin levels because those are the top two reasons for um, hair loss for sure. Low ferritin, inadequate iron levels, that's going to affect the thyroid, but in and of itself alone, if you have a youth thyroid and you have low ferritin, that alone can cause hair loss. And then if you have both of them, it's kind of like a double whammy to your hair. So not only will, will the low ferritin interfere with T4 to T3 conversion, causing the T3 to not get into the cell, raising your reverse T3, it's also going to work on the hair itself and cause more hair growth or hair loss rather. So yes, thank you, Donna. Yes. Uh, Bonnie. Okay. Yep. Alicia. Absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. Cameo off topic, but what are your thoughts on taking? I can never say this cameo. This is another one of those words you're getting me on. Astaxanthin. Woo. I think I got it. Asta Astaxanthin for inflammation. Um, I've seen this circling among the Facebook groups. Yes, it is. I do like it. Um, you know, it's one of those like Cameo, when we're working together, right, I give you kind of, here's what we need to use with you. And I really try to keep it therapeutically narrowed. Number one, to save you money. And number two, not to pile on so many things that we don't know what's working and what's not working. So yes, to answer your question, yes, astaxanthin, I said it three times probably, I think, uh, does work for inflammation, but it, it, it's just kind of like, what do you need in order of importance? And I guess if you have the extra funds, you throw it in. Once we get to kind of like the bottom, like here's what you, here's like my wish list and here's what I would add in, but your inflammatory response isn't that bad. We really need to work on your thyroid and insulin first. And you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's one of those like, to answer your question, yes, but you know, toss it in if it, it's kind of individualized whether or not you need it at the top of your list or at the bottom of your list. Jessica, have you seen eyebrows grow back with optimal thyroid hormones? Sometimes, sometimes, not all the time. Um, so mine did to a point, but my eyebrows in, so the outer corners, Jessica, so the outer corners of the eyebrows that are normally missing with, um, with hypothyroidism, those can come back. But the overall appearance of the eyebrow, if it's thin, that normally does not come back. Now, if, if anybody out there has optimized their thyroid and had their eyebrow, eyebrows grow back thicker, let me know because mine are still pretty thin. I still got to like use the brush and the pencil and all that. So hair on head's good. Eyebrows still a little bit thin. Eh, we just deal with it, right? Um, but the outer corner of the eyebrows, yes, definitely. Um, Donna, I guess I jumped on later. Oh, that's quite all right. Yeah, no, we did cover it, but I'm glad you brought it up. It's worth saying again, especially if somebody did jump on late because that was right in the beginning. So it was optimized the thyroid hormones. We went through the, the optimal lab values for each of them. Um, then went into the ferritin and the iron panel and, and what to do about that. So I have to remember to put the ferritin iron link in here as well. Um, okay. Cameo. Okay. Got it. Thanks. And Cameo, you know, you can reach out to me too. And, and just ask me, we can go over your supplements draw now and see if, if there's anything that we can pull and put that in. And just kind of depending on, I know we have you on the whole body collagen. So that should really start kicking in along with optimizing your thyroid, really start kicking in to, to see some hair improvement. And I got to tell you a story. I do have um, one patient, she'll end up watching this, I think in the replay. I don't know if she's on right now, but we are kind of stuck with this whole COVID thing 
with getting her on the right medication right now. So we're doing everything else possible. And she said she has definitely noticed already an improvement in her hair loss. So where she was getting those big clumps, like the picture that I put on for this Facebook Live, the, the clump of hair in your hand. Now that has reduced significantly. She's only getting a few hairs daily. And once we optimize her thyroid, oh my goodness, you should see a total turnaround, a complete improvement. So it is possible to start working on your hair, even if you are in that state where you're like, I can't optimize my thyroid yet. I can't get into a new doctor yet. I can't do anything right now. Um, and oh yeah, you're here, aren't you? Hi, hi, Francine. Um, so yeah, it, it, even if you are kind of stuck in that place of, of being handcuffed and not being able to be on the right thyroid medication, we can still start to see improvements. And it's it's dietary changes. It's what we talked about earlier, removing the right fancy and removing the gluten, removing the sugar, switching over and improving the intake of fats that you're taking in. So really focusing on like the eggs and the avocado and the spinach and the collagen in your coffee and, and cooking with coconut oil and olive oil, um, just really improving the good quality of fats because that feeds the hair. Uh, fresh wild caught salmon. That's fantastic. That's a great source of omega threes, eating walnuts, using almond flour, using coconut flour. I could go on, but focusing on those good fats are just going to feed your hair and then increasing your protein slightly using whole body collagen, removing the sugar, completely cutting out the gluten, cutting out the processed foods. Now we are pretty much all in a state that we can't go out to eat. I mean, some restaurants are still, yes, I still go grab things from a local restaurant for takeout, but nowhere near what we were before. So the amount of processed food has gone down, home cooking has gone up, and you have more control over what goes on, over what goes in to your body. So if you think about that, it's kind of a blessing that we're in this state right now, because this is the time that you can focus on you. You can take the time and really focus on what goes into your body and how you are treating your body. Sugar is the devil. Absolutely, freaking lutely Francine. Yes, it is. Listen, they have done MRIs. I'm totally going off topic. They have done MRI studies on the brain. And the part of the brain that lights up with sugar addiction is the same part of the brain that illuminates in an MRI with a cocaine addiction. Sugar and cocaine are very related when it comes to stimulating the brain. Sugar addiction is real. How many of you after Christmas, you indulged a little bit and then all of a sudden, and I told this story, this is me, all of a sudden the dark chocolate wasn't sweet enough. My paleo cookies weren't quite cutting it. I wanted me a real Nestle Toll House cookie and a Reese peanut butter cup. And it was like, that's not me. Are you kidding me? And that was true sugar craving, sugar addiction kicking in. So yeah, sugar's the devil. Absolutely. Jan, you're saying, thank goodness I haven't had a lot of hair loss. And not a lot of people do. I didn't have the hair loss. I had one little patch that went weird, like a little cowlick. That's evened out. Um, I had the hair straw. So just the thinning, very straw-like, very wispy. Um, and that's where, when I switched over the whole body collagen, it really, really changed things up for me a lot. Okay. Um, wait, some more is coming in. Cameo, you said funny about the eyebrows. The end of my eyebrows have always been thin. And I never understood why. Yeah. Uh, thyroid. That's a common one. Yep. Um, you don't have me on the whole body collagen, but I'm taking bulletproof protein powder with collagen. Okay. So Cameo, let's talk later. Shoot me a text after this is done. If that's not, maybe we need, we, we got to jump on a call. I want to know like, how is your hair doing now that we're kind of optimizing your thyroid, then how's the hair loss doing? If it's not, if you're not seeing significant changes and I like the bulletproof line, I like the bars definitely. And I like that bulletproof po protein powder that you're using. But since it's the protein powder, I'm wondering if it doesn't have enough collagen in it. And like I said, listen, I have tried, I did not try the bulletproof collagen. I tried Dr. Josh Axe. I mean, he's a rock star. I like him a lot. Um, but I didn't notice much with his collagen. And I tried the Vital Proteins and I tried Primal Kitchen. I like the Primal Kitchen bars. I, I recommend those to people as well. But that didn't quite cut it when it came to the, the collagen. So Cameo, it might be the case that we need to put you on the whole body 
to really get some um, hair growth or just, you know, more nutrients to your hair. Okay. Daniela, I have a slow thyroid, keep gaining weight, but what bothers me most is inflammation around the tummy stomach area at times with pain. Got all the tests done, but nothing is abnormal. What can I do? So Daniela, I haven't seen your name on here. I'm not sure how much you have um, jumped on and watched any of my lives or different talks or whatnot, but normal versus optimal, Daniela. So there's normal lab values, normal lab value, like the side of a barn. And then there's optimal lab values, like a target. We have to get your thyroid optimal, not just normal. So Daniela, it could be that if you're still struggling with inflammation, still struggling with weight gain, still struggling with pain and not able to lose fat, it could very much be that your thyroid is not yet optimized. I would love to talk to you. You can definitely shoot me a personal message. Um, I'm also going to put my number in the comment section too in this post. You can text me directly. You can go to my website. I'll put that here. Um, Miss Daniela, I wonder if I can reply right to you. No, I can't. So I have to put it down here. I'm going to put my website on here and you can fill out the form for a free health evaluation, which is basically mean you getting on a call and me learning a little bit more about you and where your numbers are and see if we can work together. So through um, what thyroid meds and dose are you on? Yeah, that's my question for her too. So that's why I kind of want to see Daniela. And then also what your, what your numbers are, because you're saying normal, but you, well, you're saying nothing is abnormal. That doesn't tell us much. And also Daniela, we would want to look at so much other stuff with you. We would want to look at, um, your iron profile, what's your, your iron level, your ferritin, your selenium, your magnesium, your iodine, your hormones, your insulin levels, your A1C, your glucose. That's what we talked about last week. There's so many different factors that come into inflammation and pain, thyroid function, as well as weight gain, weight loss. Um, so we have to kind of look at the whole picture. And really, that's the beauty of functional medicine, too. We look at you as a whole person. So I'm sure you're kind of feeling lost in the conventional medicine aspect of things, how conventional medicine just uh, doesn't quite look at you as a whole person. doesn't spend the time with you that you need. So when I work with patients, I work with them for 90 minutes to begin with, and then they have 24 seven access to me. So I will leave you with this, um, because I have to jump off. My puppy dog has an appointment. So, um, I have to jump off, but I want to leave you with this, what I'm doing in the month of April. I said it in the video that I posted today, but I'll say it again. If you would, are interested in becoming a new patient, all new patients get free lifetime access to the complete thyroid fix masterclass. So it's everything we're going to be doing together to optimize you, but then you have access to that masterclass on your own as well to continue educating yourself and continue optimizing your thyroid. And you can circle back to that class. You can go through the modules. You can go through anything in the masterclass at any point of time, even after we're done. And then I have a couple extra special freebies for my new patients as well in April. So if you are interested in learning more, you can shoot me a direct message on Facebook. You can go onto my website at amyhorneman.com and fill out the um, free health evaluation form, or you can call me directly at 412-400-0828. I can post that on here too. And there, eight two eight. That is my number. You can text me or call me directly on that, and we can jump on a call. Donna says, "Thanks for all your help. My pleasure, Donna. Thank you for all you do. Um, thank you, all the administrators, Jan, Shelley, Rory, Donna, Jessica. All you guys give such great advice in the attuned thyroid. I was just side note, side side note before I go. I was talking to um, a new person today, and she's a member of multiple groups, and she's." She says that she has been overwhelmed in the past with conflicting information. And I said, you know, the one thing that I love about the attuned thyroid, those moderators, the administrator, they're on point when it comes to posting scientifically backed information. Nothing goes up on there that is going to be conflicting. And, and I truly believe, I haven't seen this happen. It may have happened. But if somebody were to post something wonky, like just out there, I think you guys would jump in and be like, um, no, I don't think so. That's not right. So that is why I love the tune thyroid group. I just, I praise you guys all the time. You just, you're giving your time and your energy and your knowledge. And it's just, 
Um, I know so many people on there appreciate it, but they probably, they don't say it enough. I don't say it enough. So thank you. Um, so thank you, Donna. Thank you, Jan. Thank you, Jessica, Rory and Shelly. And did I miss any Jane? And you guys are rock stars. And Anna, you're jumping on late. We're just about to go. But Anna, you can watch the replay. It's going to post on Facebook in just a moment and you can press replay. So to all of you, thank you for jumping on. I will see you next week. Just stay safe, stay sane, reduce your stress. Ask me any questions that you have. Okay, I'll see you next week.